What is alopecia areata and do you have it? In this video, we'll answer this question in depth so you know what to do next. So out of all the different types of hair loss, alopecia areata is probably the easiest to diagnose. In most cases, you're looking at clearly defined bald patches and they're round or oval shaped like an egg. They can appear at any spot on the scalp and in men also on the beard. In the US, 1.7% of the population will get alopecia areata at some point in their lives and up to 20% of these will be children. In adulthood, AA affects men and women at the same rate. And research suggests that there are two broad clusters of patients. Patients in the first cluster tend to have a family history of AA and show the first symptoms at a younger age. Those in the second cluster tend to be the first in their family. They also develop symptoms at a later age. Patients in the first cluster tend to have a worse outlook. In other words, their hair loss is likely to last longer and be more severe. So what exactly is the genetic contribution to the disease? In other words, how much of AA is down to the genes and how much is down to the environment? One of the easiest ways to answer this is using genetically identical twins. In 55% of cases where one identical twin has AA, the other will also have it. Of course, identical twins also usually share the same environment, so this 55% is an upper estimate. Overall, up to 42% of people with alopecia areata have a family history of the disease. Here you can see a mother and her son, both with alopecia areata. Now, what are the various subtypes of AA? We already looked at the most common type of AA. This comes in the form of discrete oval patches and it's called, well, patchy AA. But there are other types. In some cases, all scalp hair can fall out and this is called alopecia totalis. In extreme cases, every single hair in the body can fall out. So eyebrows, body hair, hair in the genital region, everything. This is known as alopecia universalis. There is also a diffuse form of AA, which can be a bit more difficult to correctly diagnose, especially in the early stages. One other very distinctive form is ophiasis. Here you get a bald strip along the lower part of the head. This type is particularly difficult to reverse. Now, what about the prognosis? In other words, how does AA evolve over time in a patient? And the answer is this. If there's one takeaway about AA, it's that it's completely unpredictable. Some people will get one bald patch, which will soon go away on its own without even any treatment. And that will be the last time they ever have to worry about AA again. In others, however, the patches can start multiplying and the hair loss can become even more severe. It's possible you start with one small patch and end up with alopecia universalis a few years later. In other words, without a single hair on your body. In many people, the outcome will be in between these two extremes. In other words, the AA will ebb and flow through the years. You get periods where the ball patches flare up, followed by long periods of recovery and regrowth. And these cycles can happen several times in a person's life. So the takeaway is that if you get a ball patch, you need to act quickly. Make sure the hair loss doesn't spread and you don't end up with a lifelong problem. We'll come to that shortly. But first, a few words about the cause. So what causes AA? This is the million dollar question. And the answer, like with most types of hair loss, is that we don't really know. Very likely though, it's an autoimmune condition. In other words, our own body begins to attack the hair follicles for reasons that we don't really understand. The end result is that hairs in the affected areas prematurely end their active growth phase and end up in a prolonged resting phase. But unlike other forms of hair loss, the hair follicle is not permanently scarred. For this reason, there is always the possibility of regrowth. So, because people with AA are likely facing issues with an overactive immune system, they're also at a higher risk of developing other autoimmune conditions. These include autoimmune thyroid disease, lupus, and vitiligo. Up to 16% of patients with AA will also have one of these other autoimmune diseases. So what's the solution? Unfortunately, there is no simple cure for AA. In 2022, the FDA approved the first ever treatment, oral faricitinib. 
oral tablets of this word that I just can't pronounce and it begins with a B. Brand name, Olumiant. This tablet is a classed as a so-called JAK inhibitor. JAK stands for Janus Canassis and refers to a class of proteins that are involved in regulating inflammation and immune responses. The approval covers adult patients with severe AA involving more than 50% of the scalp. But the tablet is far from a cure for this condition. Only up to 35% of patients will see significant regrowth and typically this will not be complete. It's also a very powerful medication with potentially serious side effects and a black box warning. So this is very far from a cure or even a satisfactory treatment, unfortunately. Aside from Lumiant, doctors can prescribe various immunosuppressive treatments off-label, for example, corticosteroids. These can either be systemic or topical. A new trend is also for patients to try out minoxidil, often in combination with microneedling. Though it doesn't treat the underlying cause in any way, this treatment has been found to work for some patients. When hair does regrow, it typically comes out as faint white hairs at first, before eventually becoming as full-grown pigmented hair. Okay guys, that's it for this video. Head over to hairguard.com if you're worried about hair loss. Also, let me know in the comments what topic to cover next, or if you have any questions, I'll try to answer them below. See you in the next video.